Well, today we are fishing on the Maribyrnong River. It's a type of fishing that I haven't done for quite a while, but really does bring me back to my roots because for me, this is where it all started. Using simple coarse fishing techniques with your nibble tip rods, a couple of bells, your traditional baits like your scrub worms, your maggots and your yabbies. A really simple form of fishing. It's really enjoyable to be out here doing this style of fishing once again. And today we've got some really pleasant conditions. So we're just gonna sit back and what we will do is run you through just some of the basic setup and techniques in order to hopefully catch a good sized brim around here because that is going to be our target species but it's whether you can find those bigger ones and not those little pesky ones so that's today's challenge and hopefully we can get onto a few to share with you Let me show you about the setup here guys. So very, very simple stuff. So you can see, this is the little tackle box that I bring with me. And as you can see, very, very small hooks, very, very small sinkers, couple of swivels there. That's all you need. You don't need anything fancy or extravagant for this type of setup. And that's pretty much all I put in my backpack. I've got some pre-made Stimulate Burley. You can definitely make your own up just using some aniseed oil and breadcrumbs and tuna oil, anything along those, maybe some crust up pilchards. In here, we've got our bait. And as you can see, I've got the little uh, cooler there at the bottom there just to keep the bait nice and fresh. So we've got some maggots and some scrub worms in there. And then obviously, as you can see, very, very simple setup here, guys. So this is one of these. Uh... Whoa, 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 that's a fish. Sorry, matey. No. That was like the worst time to. Oh, it's a good fish. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have to grab the net on this one. This is a good fish. <laughs> I think this is on. Oh yeah, it's a nice brim. Uh, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go this way, so we can come down the rocks. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a good fish. Oh, he's going right for those rocks. Oh, are you okay? Yeah, watch that line. Yeah, that's all right. That is a nice. Look at that. Oh, that was so, and so. The whole chair almost went in the drink. Oh, my goodness. Yep, yep, we're on. That's all right. Oh, shit. Uh, the brim's in the net. <laughs> Oh, this is not bad either. I don't think it's as big though. Look at it go for the rocks. No, it's okay, it's okay. This is, this is much smaller, much smaller. Oh, I'll probably lift this one, Drove. I'll lift this one. It's okay. Oh, there you go. They've woken up. Uh, we've got the double. Look at that. <laughs> How good is that? Ooh. And there you go. That is what it's all about. So this is fishing on the Maribyrnong River. And this is what we're here for. Beautiful, big brim like that. And uh, what you didn't see then, which was really, really funny was, I've got one of those chairs that have two built-in rod holders. And uh, there's not a lot of weight on that chair. And the chair and the two rods pretty much went in the water. So I had to have my mate there help rescue those rods. Um, and then as we were battling this beautiful brim here, the other rod went off and I've actually got another smaller size brim there. But uh, that is an absolutely beautiful fish. So he's in the mid 30s, so you definitely get bigger ones in this. But you know, the Maribyrnong River is not much to look at, but look how healthy that fish is. Just that beautiful silver coloration. This is a very healthy fish. And what we wanna do is stop yapping and get this beautiful fish back in the water ASAP and get him on his way. So that way he might put on a few more centimeters and become that trophy sized brim that someone will catch one day. And there's only one thing better than catching these fish and that's releasing them and watching them swim away. So here we go. You just want to take your time, make sure they're ready to go. There he goes. How good is that? So as I said, the Maribyrnong River, sometimes there's not much to look at, but there's some nice fish in here, don't you worry. Okay, and there is your other fish that was caught at the same time. So two fish landed probably within about 40 seconds of each other. This one is obviously much smaller, so he is spot on 28 centimetres, which is probably a good time to mention that 28 centimetres is the exact legal size of these beautiful fish. I've got no interest in keeping them. I know some people eat them. I love these fish. I've actually got a massive respect for them. Beautiful looking fish, great sports fish when you're fishing with soft plastics and hard body lures and surface lures. And um, 
for me these are a special fish and they always go back in the water and uh, he might be small but he's a beautiful fish and we're going to get him back in the water so there you go beautiful Maribyrnong river brim i'm just going to carefully walk down these rocks that going over and And away he goes. <laughs> okay, sorry, back to the setup because we did get rudely interrupted then by a nice big brim. And uh, as you can see, I've just got one of these fishing chairs because you're gonna find a lot of these jetties don't really have any sort of built-in rod holders, which can make things mighty awkward. So I bought this chair a little while ago. And what's great is it's got the section there where you can just set up your rods and you've got two built-in rod holders. And as you can see there, I've got my two rods that I'm running there. So I've got the whiting tip rod and I've got just a standard rod. So they're both one to four kilo rods. One seven foot, the other one is seven foot six. Both very nice and finesse sort of nibble tip styles. And yes, something I'm not a big fan of, but we've got the valve set up on there. So that way we can sit back and have a bit of a chat. And obviously if one of the rods go off, you're going to know because that's going to start singing away. And that's it. That's the basic setup there, guys. And as you can see, nothing fancy we're not using extravagant gear that is just very basic affordable gear using basic baits basic rigs and we're catching some nice fish now so uh, i think that's a better fish now if it is big i'll run and get the net hard to tell. i don't know if he is that big it's just hard no he's about the same size as the other ones probably about 30. Yeah. geez they hit hard don't they yeah. <laughs> Oh, he's a nice fish. It's all right. <laughs> God, they are so deceiving when they um. That is another beautiful fish. Very nice, mate. That's all right. Yeah, go for him, mate. Oh, <laughs> that would have looked amazing. See you, mate. Okay, so setup for this style of fishing is absolutely critical, and getting that setup right is the big difference in having a productive day and catching plenty of fish. Or catching nothing at all so what I like to do for this style of fishing is so this is a seven foot six one to four kilo rod so this is actually a whiting rod but what I like about this rod is it's got the very very thin nibble tip so that tip of that rod is so so thin and fine that it's really good for finicky fish because you see all of those little nibbles and inquiries in this case there was no problems because that whole rod almost went into the drink but these very very light and sensitive rods are great and also that slightly longer size rod is great because when you've got your rod and the rod holder, it allows you to just have the tip of the rod sitting over the water's edge, which is really, really important. Now, what I have got here is a 2,500 size reel. This is nothing fancy. That's only an $80 reel. And I've got six pound braid that is spooled on here. Now, what I do want to show you is the fishing rig. I think this is the critical part. So what I'm running here, so this is just a little burly cage that acts as like a running sinker. So you can see there's a little bit of lead on there. So that acts as your weight to give you a casting distance. Now what happens is as you cast this into the water, that burly that's in here, and that's just some pre-made burly that I've bought from the tackle store, that burley will just slowly disperse from that burley cage, creating a great scent trail. And then what I've got from there is just a small barrel swivel, and I've got about 60 centimeters of four pound fluorocarbon. So yes, very, very thin and light. Brim are a very, very smart, finicky fish. And the lighter the leader that you can go, you're gonna find you have the more success. And then what I've got on there is a very, very tiny size 12 fly hook. And I've got on there pinned very, very carefully about five or six maggots. And you're gonna find that that setup is absolutely deadly. Now what I like to do is have two different rods with two different setups. So I've got another rod beside me, and that is just a very basic running sinker rig. So I've got a very, very small piece size sinker that goes to a swivel, again, about 50 centimeters of four pound fluorocarbon leader. The difference on that one is I've got a size six long shank hook and I'm using some scrub worms. And you're gonna find having those two there is a great idea because sometimes the brim like particular baits and especially with this water clarity, it's quite dirty. The scrub worms work really well. You could use yabbies, you could use pieces of raw chicken. We've got another bite on. Would you from the distance anyway, that'll look cool. There we go, they're coming on strong now though. Beautiful, and look at look how the hook's pinned. That's perfect. That is the perfect hook up there, guys. So look at that, that is that small hook 
and it is pinned right on the side of the mouth. And the beautiful thing about this is you can take that out very easily without hurting or damaging the fish, get him straight back in the water and on his way. Hope oh, and you'll find he'll definitely come on. <laughs> there, there we go. go. <laughs> the yeah. stubborn little thing. <laughs> on again. This might be a net job, this one, because that one took off. Oh. oh, now he's woken up. I don't think he's. I think that was just a huge take. Oh, and he's a little bit bigger, but he's not. He's not a huge what fish. <laughs> that was deceiving. A little fish like that's almost pulled the whole thing in. I'll tell you what, I reckon we can just can lift him. him yeah, yeah, matey. Jeez, that was wow, look at that. You go nice and calm. There you go. <laughs> oh, there we go. I think you're on. There's another. So we're catching heaps of this size now. So he is probably just on 30. Nice little fish, that one. So um, once again, pinned in the side of the mouth, which is perfect. And uh, let's get him back on his way. The shadow. There we go. Off the jetty, another little brimbo. So, and you carefully walk down these rocks. Hopefully, not fall in. And got a nice flat spot here that we've been able to do all the releases. And hopefully, and he swims away. There you go. Now on the Maribyrnong River, there are a number of different fish species that you can target. And you can obviously target them like bait, which we are doing today. You can also walk the banks and flick some soft plastics and some lures, which also works quite well. Now, target species, bream is probably the most targeted thing in the Maribyrnong River. They've been in here for many, many years. They are quite thick. And you get some really, really nice, big, healthy ones with that real shiny, silvery color. You'll also get pinky snapper that move up and down the system based on salt levels and how much rainwater that we've had. You get a lot of mullet and obviously you can have a prized catch mulloway which are pretty tough to get around here but there are some big ones in this system. And the other thing is this area has been heavily stocked with estuary perch in the last couple of years and um, that presents as a really exciting thing especially for guys that like to use surface lures and shallow diving hard body lures. You can fish up against the bridge pylons and you can have some really good fun and what you're going to find in years to come those estuary perch are going to grow in size so hopefully that's going to be exceptional fishing in years to come but for now and today brim is definitely our target species it's getting an avalanche of tiny little brim now which is oh <laughs> yeah oh oh uh this do you want to just come with a net this was just playing with it so slowly and then it pulled a tiny bit of drag. <laughs> it's not that it's not that big, but it's um, maybe with all the little ones I've been catching. He's not a tiny one. He's a better fish. <laughs> they go hard. That's yeah. Right. That's, there you go. Than the one that I <laughs> That's a nice fish. There we go. A word of warning. If you're gonna handle these fish, handle them with care because uh, they do have very, very sharp spikes up there. So you wanna handle them carefully. I was trying to get that hook out so they can get this guy back on his way really quickly and I've got a spike right through the hand, which is pleasant. And now I've got a little bit of blood dripping from my hand. But there is another beautiful legal size brim. So obviously that is not a monster. So we're definitely gonna get him back in the water. Very, very feisty little one. What was really funny, it was only very subtle little taps. And then when I lifted up that rod, it actually took off. There you go. Here's a real feisty one. This one, as my hand is bleeding to oblivion there. So let's get him back in the water. And climb down these rocks. Now he's going to just... Oh, hello. We've got a dog here. Hello, mate. That's my fish. You can't have it. All right. <laughs> and then... And away the fish goes. Whew. Now today we are fishing the high tide changeover. So we've got here 90 minutes before high tide and we're going to fish probably about 90 minutes after high tide. And that's a primary bite window because a lot of the fish species will fire up on those tide changes. You will find on slack water and that's when there's no moving water. So that's when you're right on that peak of high tide that the action will go very quiet. And then once again, once you get some running water, the fish will come on again. A bit of the no flow, no go type of theory. Now, I do like fishing here on high tide for a couple of reasons. A, 
it's a lot easier to land a fish because on peak low tide you've got quite a bit of rocks to contend with and when you're on these jetties it can be a little bit tricky having to climb down the rocks and land a fish the other thing that you'll find is on high tide a lot of your fish species like your brim like to come right up to the edges and what they'll do is they'll eat a lot of those crustaceans and yabbies and even some of the weed and algae off the rocks and it's amazing how many times i've been here walking up and down the banks and you'll basically just see swarms of brim just chewing on the rocks so it's really really amazing what's also as amazing is this time of year when you've got the warmer weather conditions is the brim like to come right into the edges and again if you're walking the banks you'll be surprised how many brim you'll see hard up against the banks so not out in your deeper water but really on the edges so there you go we've got a bite behind us so we might go attend to that but a little pointer that might help you with planning your day just want to it's going to load i think it'll load up here we go it's either a small one or he's just playing with it that's a, it's a small oh look at him take off <laughs> there's only a little one you got offended by you calling him small. <laughs> no, he's a little one, but isn't that funny? He just took off way to the left. No, he's not too bad. He's a, probably just a borderline legal fish. Oh, actually, he's a bit bigger than what I thought. It's on. There you go. Another beautiful size brim. So they're coming on strong now. So we'll get that hook out of his mouth and get him back in the water. Well, that's a wrap, everyone. And what an enjoyable few hours that has been. So back here doing some back to basics fishing really enjoying some warmer weather it's been really pleasant conditions we're not using extravagant gear so very simple we've got the couple of rods got some simple baits and rigs we've got the bell set up and it's just been great just to sit here and it's been pretty action-packed we have caught a lot of brim nothing of major size so a lot around that legal size and we've got a couple that have been a little bit bigger it's just been really pleasant and enjoyable if it's not a form of fishing that you do then i'd really encourage you go to your local river pull up some rods use some of the techniques that we've shown you today it can be really fun if you're new to fishing uh, if you're fishing with kids or if you're like us and you just love fishing it's a great way to come here pull up a chair sit and unwind catch a few fish and have some fun anyway guys i hope that you've enjoyed the episode and i look forward to seeing you on the screen sometime soon